debate of the week, a show that everybody has an option to say whatever they feel, whether it's positive, negative, whether we talk about the best of wrestling, the shit of wrestling, or all in between. So as you can see from the title below, WrestleMania 3, two matches. This is what it's going to come down to. I'm going to do basically my thoughts on two matches that were well worked. Not most hyped, but well worked. And let's be honest here. I'm sure a lot of people are going to say, well, we know who's the best well worked match. And we know which one was the best hype match. Yes, we do. But we never broke down how we really felt about, well, not everyone. Broke down how well the matches actually worked. Now, that is Ricky the Dragon's Steamboat versus Macho Man Randy Savage. Oh, yeah. Versus Hulk Hogan and Andre the Giant. You know, Hogan, I am going to string your neck. I'm going to shake you in hand. <laughs> but you get my point, ladies and gentlemen. WrestleMania 3 was a great match. I was fit. I mean, great show, not a great match. I was 15 years. Well, was I 15 years old? No, I was 14 years old when it came out because it came out before I turned 15. It was such a great match. Both of them. I love seeing Andre the Giant getting slammed by Hulk Hogan. And when it came to Steamboat and oh, Savage was so good. So many jumps from the top ring rope. Some of them failed, some of them succeeded. In the end, how things were. It doesn't matter who won the matches. It mattered how did how was it worked. Now, of course, we can honestly say that Steamboat and Randy Savage was the better worked of the two. But we can't take away from what happened with John Andre the Giant and Hulk Hogan. But we still have to take into account the physical abilities of both men. And both sets of heels and both sets of faces. Now with Hulk Hogan and Andre the Giant. Hulk Hogan was in his prime easily. Andre the Giant was really getting very sick by this time because of his condition of growing very large. His body literally was deteriorating. So this was literally his probably his last WrestleMania match. It was literally. We didn't see him much after that. He retired by 1993. He died. But seeing how he was when I was a small boy in the 70s, he was still in great shape. He hadn't gotten too large yet. Compared to this Andre the Giant, he was a, like a shell of himself. He just barely could move around. And if you saw him versus the Ultimate Warrior when he beat the shit out of him because he was pissing him off, you can honestly see that in both cases, he really wasn't there much. He just couldn't give a lot. But he did give enough that made Hogan look good and put him over. Now when you flip to the other spectrum, 1986 to 1987, Ricky the Dragon Steamboat was in the WWE. Well, WWF at the time. He had already dealt with Jake the Snake Roberts. He had. Oh, and that was a great rivalry until he got his head hammered into the paint and he had a big lump with his eye turning red. Ricky, is, from what I understand, is a very nice, easygoing, half Japanese, half American man. He's a very nice guy. But I'm sure he wasn't exactly happy about that with Jake Roberts. He was not happy. He drove his face into the pavement and gave him a bad, messed up face. Now, even though by then he had recovered, I'll say this. There was no real physical problems with Ricky. And there wasn't no really physical problems with Randy Savage. Admittedly, around that time, for to understand, Randy and Miss Elizabeth was breaking up. You can tell me below if that wasn't exact time. But Miss Elizabeth and Randy Savage had actually gotten married in real life. And I believe around that time, they were having marital problems and they were about to break up. So I think around that time, even though they did great matches, both these guys, they had their separate own types of problems. Ricky almost getting a nasty concussion that could kill him. And Randy Savage having marital problems and probably had just gotten divorced by WrestleMania 3 or maybe WrestleMania 4. But marriage was becoming an issue. So when it comes down to it, both sets of matches had something in them that we probably didn't recognize. I didn't see any of the stuff. I was only 14 years old. I'm just going, oh yeah, Andre got slammed, yes! And then when I saw Ricky saying, yeah Ricky, you get that damn bastard, get him! 
I did say that as a kid. And I thought, oh, Miss Elizabeth is beautiful, but I want sensational Sherry. She's gorgeous. She has big boobs. Actually, her boobs weren't that big. But the dresses she wore make those boobs look nice. I'm not going to lie about Miss, Miss Sensational Sherry. She may have not had big titties. But whatever she wore made them look big. And that made her epic. But in the end, both these matches were great. But if I got to be honest here, which I know you're going to agree with me. Savage and Steamboat was the better work match. But let's be honest here. Both matches had their own little problems in them. And both matches, even though one is more remembered than the other, has made a spotlight, well, spotlight in WWE, WWF history. It's when they had the most strongest rivalries, the most well-built rivalries. Look what we just got in this Raw. Do I actually care about John Cena? No. They haven't produced him properly in quite a while. They made him overpowered. And they haven't given anybody that could actually beat him. And then we look at Brock Lesnar. Brock Lesnar is no Andre the Giant. Andre the Giant had a presence not just because of his size, but because of his character. He could be the destructive giant or the gentle giant. Brock Lesnar can be a beast or a patriot, but the problem is... Because he went away for so long, and because he signed a contract that does not give him constant use in two years, that takes away what he could do. We didn't even see him in this Raw. We didn't. And I know people are going to say, well, that's great. He's not there at that Raw. That will give us some time away from him. The problem is, he's been away for a very long time. And he disappears, and he comes back. He's not the Rock. He doesn't have that charismatic charisma of the Rock. Of a Stone Cold Steve Austin that could still get over. He just doesn't have it. So in this case, I just don't have it with him. Not at all. But this WrestleMania 3 is a milestone in professional wrestling of the golden age. Where you can see real feuds built over several months. And they don't need to end at a pay-per-view. They don't need some type of squirrely type of thing at a pay-per-view. You can build them up to a signature pay-per-view and you get the most out of it. And this is what I think the WWE is totally forgotten about. But you guys tell me below if that makes any sense to you. So I hope you enjoy this debate of the week. Please give me a comment below. Give me a thumbs up if you really like this one. And see ya at my Impact Review and that next debate of the week. I am considering it. I don't know what it is yet. But why don't you tell me below what you'd like to see next? See ya!